Okay, now we're working with uh, this high frit glaze. Uh, the specific gravity is 1.46, and this glaze is 90% frit 3110 and 10% EPK. So 10% EPK is about the least amount that um, I would want to have in a glaze without adding any bentonite. Um, and then the rest of this is frit, which is a really heavy material. It's really settled. So I just made this glaze uh, yesterday and uh, it has hard panned on the bottom here. So, I don't know. I'm trying to mix it and I can't even get the spatula in to start mixing the glaze. If I start digging a little bit, I can kind of get it in there and I can trying to pull some of this glaze up so you can see with my finger So you can see the chunks um, of glaze. So it's really, this is called hard panning. See, there's chunks of glaze and it all settles on the bottom and then it's really hard to mix. So when your glaze hard pans, it usually means that it doesn't have enough clay in it. So clay keeps our glazes in suspension. So the clay particles float around in water and they help to keep everything else floating in the water as well. Otherwise, everything would just sink to the bottom because our glaze materials are essentially just ground up rocks. So they have no reason why they should float. Um, clay is a very special ingredient. So here we have this glaze. It's impossible to mix. Um, even using my hands, it's just settling. So I'm going to try mixing with a drill and uh, see if that helps, if we can get it moving. And then uh, we'll try adding some Epsom salts to flocculate the glaze and see if that helps to get everything suspended. So floating, you want the particles to be floating in the glaze. So I'm going to try mixing. So it's definitely not mixing very well. So it's starting to mix. Um, I think I have just enough clay, so I have 10% clay in here. Just enough clay that it's not like cement on the bottom of the container. So that sometimes happens. If there's no clay in a glaze, it would be really, really hard to mix. So luckily, we got at least all of it moving around now. If I were to just let that sit. Um, all the heavy particles would settle at the bottom again. So I've managed to free them all up and I'm going to dip a test tile just to see. So you can see how watery this glaze is. Um, there's no longer any material stuck to the bottom. So I managed to get it all mixing around. So I'll dip this test tile and just show you how it applies. So 
you can watch it's drying really really fast it's basically dry now you can see this drip on the top has solidified it's kind of frozen in time oh, focus um, it's a really thin layer barely noticeable you can see the line of the glaze layer there but it's just like not even as thin as a piece of paper so that you can see all the the grooves in the test tile still so that is a very thin layer of glaze it's hard for my camera to focus okay so that is before flocculation so now what I'm going to do is just make sure it's not settling. So you can see it's starting to settle again. So I had it all mixed, but it doesn't take long for it to just start settling on the bottom. There's just not enough clay to keep all the particles in suspension. So I'm going to add, I'll just start with one drop of Epsom salts and then mix with a drill and see what happens. So that didn't really have much of an effect. Still not stuck to the bottom, so that's good. I'm going to add another drop of Epsom salts. Uh, this is a saturated Epsom salt solution, so I can see the granules of salt. I don't know if you can tell, but there are undissolved grains of salt in the bottom, and that's how you know you have a saturated solution. It just means that um, no more salt can be dissolved and so um, the the water is completely saturated with Epsom salts uh, so I added another drop and I'll give it a mix so notice how the bubbles keep swirling around swirling around because it's so thin That's two drops. I might go up to five drops now. So three, four, five. Still pretty thin. Milky thin. One, two, three, four, five, thirty drops. One, two, three, four, five. So I noticed the the glaze was just swirling and then it kind of came to an abrupt halt. Um, so that's a pretty good sign, usually, that it's starting to flocculate. So I'll mix this up. It's definitely getting a little bit thicker. I wouldn't say it that we're there yet. I'll try dipping my finger in there. So that's still very thin. Um, I can feel there's a little bit of sediment just in the grooves on the bottom. So just mixing that up. <laughs> yeah, that's still way too thin to, uh, to glaze anything. One, two, three, four, five. So, did you notice how, so when I swirl it around, and then it just stops, swirl, swirl, and stop. 
So it swirls for a couple of seconds and then stops. So that is good. Let's dip again. So we're getting a better coating. It's close. It's almost to where I would want it. I guess depending on the glaze. Also, I don't know what this glaze is going to look like. It's probably going to be a clear, crazed glaze. Uh, let's go five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to have to go back and count how many drops I put in. But what we're learning here is that how Epsom salts will thicken a glaze. Um, I'm going to dip a test tile. Dip this tile here. So that is a much nicer coating of glaze than the first tile. So you can see the difference. The first one dried right away before that drip had time to even out. This one has a nice, smooth, even coat. Uh, the drips have smoothed over. It's a thicker coat. You can see more of a, a ridge right here. Whereas this one, it just looks like a painted line. There isn't really an edge to the glaze. So this has a thicker coat after flocculating with Epsom salts.